As you see, a triangle has a fixed form. If we try to deform it, it doesn't give way, one doesn't need to fix the connections very tight, just a pin is enough. This in contradiction to a rectangular, square or whatever frame that has more than three angles. Whatever tight we fix the screws, it easily gives way. The general rule is that a polygon with n angles needs n minus three rigid angles to make the polygon rigid. It isn't important where the angles are located. We can consider a construction with a floor, columns or walls and a beam or floor over it as a frame. If we want to give such a rectangular frame with more than three connections a fixed form, there are two options to do so. The first one is to divide a non-triangular form in triangles. We can add a linear element like this. And you see it can withstand a force in this direction. But when we subject the frame to a force in the other direction, it gives way. The slender bracing element buckles. Buckling is the effect that an element suddenly gives way. It bends in the weakest direction when compressed over a certain amount of stress and is related to the buckling length of the element, Young's modulus and the moment of inertia. The buckling length is not the exact length of the element, but it depends on the way the element is connected on both sides. A rigid connection reuses the buckling length. To withstand this effect of buckling, a lot of material is required, much more than is needed in tension. So to give this frame a fixed form, we can do two things. Either add another tension element in this way, or add a bracing element that can withstand compression forces. Such a brace needs to be much thicker than a tension element, way more than the two tension elements that we need in this option. So this solution is less economical than this, but on the other hand it leaves more free space. But still the brace blocks the continuity between the spaces on both sides of the element. Both solutions are called a braced frame. Instead of making a braced frame, we can make a rigid frame. In this method we need to make at least one of the corners in the frame fixed, in such a way that the connected parts can't rotate, that the connection is rigid and can take a bending moment. For that it is not enough to just use one bolt or screw and a nut and fix them very tight, the construction will give way easily. At least two fixing points with a certain distance between them are needed to take a bending moment, which is, as you know, a force multiplied with the distance. So a distance is needed, and how bigger the distance, the moment arm, the bigger the bending moment it can take. So an unavoidable condition is that the dimensions of the connected parts are bigger than in the bracing method, because you need this distance. And the distance between the hole and the edge of the element needs to be at least as big as in the brace frame. Furthermore, the parts of the frame have to be stiffer, so thicker, because they are subject to bending moments. In the brace frame only compression or tension occur, forces in the long axis of the element, not perpendicular to it, so normal forces. So there is only deformation in this direction and not perpendicular to it. Of course, this is not only the case when the connection is made with bolts and nuts, but also with any other type of connection, for instance in welded connections in steel or in reinforced concrete, where the steel takes the tension and concrete the compression. These models are made of the same amount of material. The one on the left is a brace frame with hinges in the corners and the other is a rigid frame with glued fixed corners. When I put a load on both, you see how they deform. The first doesn't give way, in the second you can see these deformations which are related to these bending moments. To make a rigid frame as stiff as a brace frame requires much more material, so the solution is less economical and not just a bit. To conclude, there are two basic methods to give a frame a fixed form. 
The first is by bracing the frame. The second depends on the rigidness of the connections. The first method can be divided in either bracing with two tension rods or with one compression rod. The rigid frame is by far the most expensive, the brace frame with tension rods the cheapest. On the other hand, the rigid frame offers a non-obstructed continuity between the spaces on both sides of the frame.